Well, I want to welcome everybody to the second rock and roll show that we have on here on Public Access TV. And uh, what I've tried to do is feature the four most prominent bands that have entertained people over the last 20 or so years. We had the Poets on with Frank Gervasi, and we had Old Friends on with Jackie Bordeaux, and now we have Paul LaBelle and Exact Change, and Sal Scramali, Daddy O, and the Sax Maniac. So, fellas, welcome. Thank you, Jimmy. Nice and, to be here. And I want to thank you for featuring me over the years and letting me sing with you and rub shoulders with your, your band. And um, you often told me I sing so well you don't even turn on my mic. That's not true. That's not true. We keep the monitors on. You keep the monitors on. The mains on. are off. Yeah, and the camera's off me. You're the big draw, Jim. Let me ask You're you this. Let me start with Paul. Paul, how far back did you get in, involved in rock and roll in Scranton, in northeastern Pennsylvania? Well, I was playing. Uh, my first actual professional jobs were uh, at a very young age, 15. And I was working with a group called the Corvairs with a a guy by the name of Gene Guerrilla. Oh, Gene? wow, from the Boston yeah. Celtics. Boston Celtics, and he has so many world or, uh, championship rings, and he got off the road with the Celtics, and I first started playing with his group at Tomano's Lounge. And he's still playing, I remember that. He? I remember yeah, Tomano's. Yeah, he's, he's, he's still doing very well. Uh, uh, he's still playing. He's got a group called the Cadillacs. Yes. So, yeah, and, and that was uh, up at Francie Tomano's when I was 15 years of age. And so. then, and then, you became an entrepreneur then a little bit later where you actually owned your own club. Now that's different than virtually any uh, musician that I know of from northeastern Pennsylvania. Well, uh, that occurred in 1974. Myself uh, and my good friend Bill McHugh, right. and we were both in college together at the University of Scranton. I had just moved up to Clark Summit. Uh, my wife and I just bought her home in Clark Summit two years previous. And there was a place called The Lodge, which yes, was an old haunt up there. Spent the so, a good right? night there. Coming back from the Poconos, I used to stop there, and Bill McHugh was running it. And uh, uh, one thing came to another, and up for sale, and Bill and I bought it in 74. And we, we had a lot of fun there, and we brought in a lot of local great acts. And the place was very small, but it was just wall to wall, but just a lot of fun. There will be no other like The Lodge. I, was, was, there. Just, I was there many <laughs> nights sure with my late were. brother, Bobo and my sister yeah. Joyce. We were just at the right age. I so remember that. When did, when did you come along on the scene? And, and, oh, and do you have the, um, the most interesting name, Daddy O and the Sax Maniacs. It was a minor scandal the name, when that came out. Did they try the, to keep it out of the newspaper? Before this, it was actually, this was a spinoff of a group that was called Jumper Bones and the, and the Horns from, from Hell. Hell. I remember right. that. And this name actually came from Buzz O'Malley from down in his father, uh, Austin O'Malley, yeah. from Avoca, had the funeral home, and they called him Daddy O. And when we were searching for a new name, he said, you have to name it after my dad, you know? Uh -huh. So that's what we did. But, uh, and of course, you I put the beret on, and that, yeah, yeah. that, that made Well, that's the because the hair thing. started falling. Yeah, out. you and Dion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dion the that's because, but uh, yeah, I started, like Paul, I was probably 14, uh, 15 years old in high school. And um, I knew that I wanted to do something. I didn't really start playing at that point. I just uh, knew that I wanted to do something. And one of the teachers up at DCC, which is now Holy Cross, um, they heard my name when I first got there as a freshman. They said, uh, Scramali. I said, yeah. You Carmen's brother? I said, yeah. Come with me. And they took me in and they, they said, you know, your brother was in, he was an actor slash yes. uh, comic, you know. And uh, so they took me in and they said, you know, we'd like you to be part of the uh, theater group here and we have some plays lined up, uh, The Red Spider and uh, West Side Story and all this kind of thing. And, so that was kind of where it all started. I got into the theater in high school, yeah. and um, I shortly, I, I found out soon after that 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 was not my career because uh, I was the bad guy in West Side Story, and uh, it got to be a comedy instead of a yeah, serious, right, you know, right, I right. fell down and I was outside <laughs> the curtain, and I lay there for a half hour dead, <laughs> and then the curtain starts coming at me, and just at the last minute I rolled over, so the, I've been in that the, audi situation. Yeah, the audience went, and so I figured out maybe I'd better find something else yeah. to do instead of acting. Well, you bring a lot of comedy into your, your act, don't you? You have, yeah. a, you have a lot of fun up there. Well, you know what? I think that's what, that's what people recognize, is that they, they, they recognize, you know, the, uh, the, the jovial part of it. You yes. know, they, they, more so than the, uh, you know, they can, they can go to a concert and hear 
people, you know, and they recognize when the band is having fun, and that's what right. they, that's what they uh, relate to. Well, one of the things I, that you and both uh, Paul does, yeah. which I think is remarkable, is you find incredible musicians, and then you find a way to <coughs> spotlight them and showcase them. And even though it's your band, you're featuring them and um, each one of your band members have a following of their own. Horn players come to hear your horn, the horns, and the guitarists come to hear your guitarists, and singers to hear your, your lead singers. That and one's on you, yeah. Paul. You got the, well, you got well, the, you got question, the lineup. Without question, there's so many talented people right yep. here in Northeastern Pennsylvania, it's incredible. And you know, I'm going back to forming an exact change in 67. And that group was, uh, you know, just wonderful people. Jeannie Lombardo, Frank Lombardo, her brother sang, John Cristiano, myself. And as groups evolved, they were so talented people. Then it came to, like, Bill Arnold and... Oh, no. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and sing and just sang and played the <laughs> Hammond B3 organ. And Andrea Mitchell, which we yeah. called Chunky. Okay? Yeah, yeah, wonderful. And uh, with that group uh, came Paul Sotak, an incredible young drummer. In fact, I hired Paul when he was a senior at prep. Yeah. And he played his way all the way through with the exact change until he went to law school wow. in Villanova. And uh, Sal Gelati, I mean, just all great players. And then we started yeah. adding horns. And these people, uh, most people really don't recognize the incredible talents that are here. Yeah. Right here, hometown, That's Scranton, we Northeastern earlier, right? PA. Just, well, let me yeah, ask you the, uh, the, 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 the horns. Players. Did you start with a, a core group, Sal, of a guitar, bass, and drums, and then rhythm guitar, and then decide to, what made you bring the horns in? And then, of course, you, you really added when you added the girls, the women. Yeah, it was, it, basically, I think most groups do start out as a, as a four piece, you need to have the mm -hmm. core, right, Paul? You need to have yeah. the bass. But so it was like a four or five piece thing for the longest time. And, you know, we were doing, uh, you know, weddings and parties and things like that. And uh, if you remember this name, Julian Sparacino. I know Julian Bell. I know his whole, whole family. Okay. Julian Sparacino, one night, we were playing up at the Treadway. There's the name Blast from the Past. That's yeah. like Paul playing up at the Weldwood. Yeah. <laughs> um, he said, uh, he said, do you mind if I bring some friends in? He said, I can write some charts and stuff like that. So he brings. Wow, that's he brings, how that started. Yeah, he brings uh, yeah. Chuck Smith and. Um, Chucky. Yeah, who else? Who was the sax? Who was the uh, trumpet player? It wasn't uh, Jonathan no. Searfoss. Wolf, I think it was Danny, Danny Wolf. Wolf. Danny Wolf. Yeah. He brought, and he and he wrote the charts and he brought them in and and that was where it all started. And that was. Back in the seventies. Was right that now. right around the time of Chicago and blood, yeah. sweat, and tears? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that was, was remarkable, and uh, I mean, I was listening to all the, Earth the rock, and <clears throat> rock and roll music, and yeah. then all of a sudden, and I was also listening to jazz at the time, Paul. I was living in East Stroudsburg, and so I was down at the Deerhead Inn and listening to Phil Woods and some of the mm -hmm. horn players from down there. And so when you guys made that marriage of rock and roll and the horns, <laughs> that was remarkable that was fabulous music I think Jimmy uh, I always kind of knew w what I wanted in a group okay and the only way for me to really get this to have my own group and, and, and no offense against any of the other players but I wanted the direction of the group right I, I wanted that direction to go a certain way I wanted the sound to go a certain way and I always listened to any anybody in our group who come up with ideas as far as how we want to handle the situation, what tunes do we want to play, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of times, great ideas. Sometimes and they weren't. I just didn't use them. But I knew yeah. the direction I wanted to take the group from day one. And I, and I just thought, the only way I'm going to be able to do this is to have my own. And uh, the, the people, uh, the songs that we played, even back in the 60s and 70s, were, were just there was magnificent music back then. Not that there isn't now, but yeah. there's more so back then. <coughs> so you had prolific songwriters out, you know, back then. You know, mm -hmm. the Beatles who just came off, and Blood, Sweat, and Tears just killed it with the horns. Yeah. Chicago comes in, Earth, Wind, Chicago. and Fire. Oh, yeah. And all these songs were, were meaningful. They were melodic. There was a message. There was, Absolutely. you can sing a song, mm -hmm. okay, and you can play it. And you felt good about playing Absolutely. it, you know. Yeah. And I think with the choices that I made and with the choices that Sal made, you find your own niche. You really do. And my niche was, you know, uh, do I, do I want to play a lot of nightclubs? And I said, no, nah, I really want to go more to the wedding corporate end of it. Yeah. And that, that's where I kind of designed it, and I still spun off on a lot of nightclubs. The people who gave me one of the greatest breaks was, was the Cornfell Brothers, which was the Treadway Inn and mm -hmm. Wilkesboro at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. They had just opened up in 69. They hired me as entertainment director. 
and I went down there and I worked uh, just about five years and I booked the entertainment and that just kind of made that group blossom. And from then they <coughs> kept us in the back and they said, well, more people want you for weddings and, yeah. and I'm saying, you know, you can make this money here but you can do X amount much better doing yeah. the corporate or a wedding Don't function. you think yeah. that, you, that you tend to uh, build a group based on what you enjoy? Exactly. You, you know, know, this is yeah. what I think Paul and I oh, are yeah. on the same age. I think, yeah. I think that's, what, that's what happened. I, I think that uh, once I got accustomed to being in that R&B vein and hearing the horn section mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, there was no other. I said, this is yeah. the way it's going to be. I think you tend to... One of the players, Mikey Pryor, said to me that oh, because yeah, I said wonderful. to him, because I can't, I can't listen to country music without going yeah, like this. You know, yeah. he said to me, you know what's wrong with you? He said your, he said your your musical sensors are all filled up with uh, R and B. And I said, <laughs> you're right, sure. <laughs> you're absolutely right. And yeah. and so, yeah. this is what this is what we do. I think I think we tend to gear a, 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 a group. You know, people like at the weddings and stuff. They'll say, uh, you know, do you do any uh, current music and this and that? Yeah. Yeah, this is as current as it gets. That's you know, it. Mustang Sally. That's yeah, as current, right, right. You know, something from in the a, 70s. In the current style. That's it. That's, you know, you that's used it. to do something with yeah. Mike Pryor, which I used to get embarrassed. I don't, uh, being mayor is <laughs> being beyond embarrassment. You don't get embarrassed. No, no, no. We're not going to let out the trade <laughs> but, secrets. But here, i got to let this trade secret out. He, he would give um, me Mike's uh, second horn, yeah. and then he would send Mike behind uh, with the wireless behind oh, the curtain God, yeah. where yeah. nobody could see him, and he'd put me out front and have me uh, blowing the saxophone, and people were astounded. And they believed it they all. They believed yeah. it now all. Now you just yeah. you just blew that. I, I, see, I, I, I had sorry, we got one more yeah. for you. We got yeah. one more. But we did the same thing with Gary Kornfeld. Oh God, it was the Treadway at the time, which is now the Woodlands, and he used to love play, you know, love to fool around with bass. And we'd have him, we'd give him the salad's bass, and Sal would walk off stage. Right. And there's Billy Arnold playing the left hand on the B3. Uh, right. <laughs> and he had it all going. You know, yeah. he had all the moves. He had it all going in the right direction. Yeah. And I swear, he fooled people for week That's after so week after week after week. You know? I'd get embarrassed. I'd say that wasn't me, that was Mike Pryor. <laughs> But people still didn't believe they, it. They don't. They, they still. Don't they still it. think it was they, you. They still, they still think, think it was yeah. you. Well, I sang. I remember singing with you. I sang "Sweet Home Chicago" with Absolutely. you. And Absolutely. you know, one thing that you did, uh, that Paul did, and that Frankie Gervasi and um, Jackie Bordo did, is you fed me one-liners for my jokes. No, I think it was you that fed me the. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, you're a very warm mayor. Yeah, and I say, I say, so I looked up the word warm in the dictionary. It said not so hot. <laughs> yeah. Then he introduced me as, um, as a, a very a, model mayor. A, a model mayor. I looked up the word model in the dictionary. Said a small imitation of the real, real thing. thing. <laughs> so he, he, and that would make me feel relaxed. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And you know, that's one, what one of the there. things I want to talk about is the commitment that the city made to the musicians and the mm. musicians made to the city yeah. for our summer concerts. That was great. Nayog. Nayog Park. Park. Yeah. That was wonderful. It was a week of, of wonderful that was, music. That was and wonderful. And uh, even the weather would cooperate, but I built it all around the four groups. I built it around the night for Daddy O, a night for old friends, a night for the poets. And, and then a, you would insert other, other groups, groups up, that up were just coming acts. up. Or groups that had been around in the past. Right. That was great. And you guys drew consistently 1,500 people you know, a night. I, I, I'll tell you what, w w that was unexpected. We never expected anything that huge. Yeah. That was that was really, like you said, 1,000, 1,500. And I paid maybe you. 2,000. I paid you. And that pe you people, did? Uh, yeah, people don't understand that when I say it. Yeah. You guys get asked I think you still to owe play. me. I yeah. might. You, you get asked to play. And then, and people think you you don't have anything else to do, yeah. and uh, they don't tune the piano, and um, they expect you to play for nothing. That's uh, that was that was a great venue. We, uh, we, great we had venue. a good sound system, yeah. and I got all kinds of free Who's publicity. Who's doing the sound at the time? Dave he, he Kester and David Doug, Kester. Doug, Dave, Doug yeah. Smith did the sound, yep. and um, I would go to Lou De Naples and Al Boscoff, and I would raise money. Mm -hmm. uh, Donnie Kalina from Highland Associates. And I would ask them to support this, to pay the musicians, because mm -hmm. I said, you guys get asked so often to play for nothing. Yeah. And uh, I never thought that was fair. Yeah. Because you work hard. You work hard. Well, we do. There, there's, there's an awful lot of groups. Uh, in fact, just before we went on today, we were just talking with Jack Bordo and, and Frank Gervasi and myself and Sal that 
uh, we do get asked to play an awful lot of uh, benefits. Oh. And, and, and most of them are wonderful causes. And you try to say, okay, I, this year I can do you, I can do right. this American Cancer Act, but I can't do you two years in a row because uh, you, you just have to spread it out. You have you know? to ask and, and 10 other people in your yeah. band to well, give up a night that's and true. give up yeah. a paid night. Yeah. That, 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 that's without question. Right. But you, you, you try to give it all back as much as you can yeah. with it within reason uh, because, you know, we've been supported tremendously over the years uh, by, by local people, by uh, uh, local corporate people, by, by just all these great businesses in downtown City of Scranton. We've been supported by you for all these years. There's yeah. always a venue for us to play. Yeah. And it, it, it's time we give it back. And we spoke a little bit earlier about uh, getting together after the first year and planning it. Uh, a four band event strictly. That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to do it. Oh, that'd yeah. be great. So Frank and I spoke along with uh, Sal and Jackie, and we're going to have uh, our four bands collectively in one stage. Mm -hmm. Wow. And we're going to probably have a minimum of two stages, and then uh, we're, we're going to find a, uh, a, a special uh, need or four or five special needs yeah. that we can agree on yeah. and give it back. I'll I, go I think to it's the time. mayor for that. You know, I'd go I think, and ask him to. Time. To donate great the idea. show mobile and all of that. Well, I think, I think we I think we want to do a venue. We're looking basically. We, we'd love to do a venue inside, and we'd love to do it. We're just kind of just lacing a little bit of groundwork on a Sunday evening before a holiday. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when everybody's back home. Well, you're home, and yeah. you don't have to work the next day. And with the draw from Sal and and the poets and Jackie Bordo and the exact change, I don't. It, that would be. Big. And then at the end of the evening, it just. Everybody, a big jam session. Yeah. You have everybody going. Oh, you know? that would be great. So we're, we're, we're going to work on that. We already spoke before we went on today, the four of us, and uh, after the holidays, we're going to meet. And we'll we'll you keep know, you posted It's on a that. joy to see you musicians enjoy playing with one another. I, I just posted up on the refrigerator yesterday that next Sunday is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I, to watch Bruce Springsteen uh. and, and <coughs> Paul McCartney and Jerry Lee Lewis all up on stage together. I'd like to see you guys all up on stage well, together he, playing. Here's what happens, you know, and, and, and Sal will test this, and I'll let Sal jump in a little bit here, too. You know, people say, well, you know, is there any rivalry? No. Okay, mm. is there competition? Of course there is, because competition breeds success for all of us. I want to see every live performing band do well, and I mean that from the bottom of my yeah. heart. Honestly, Jimmy, I really do. No, you know no. me a long time. Yeah. If I can't do something, I call Sal up. Yeah. If he can't do something, right. Paul, can you handle this? Right. I, uh, yeah. We try to, you know, just put our spines out and help anybody yeah. from, yep. from work that we have overflow of, and we try to keep it as local as we possibly can. And listen, there's times that, you know, as who gets sick, and I call a couple guys in his yeah. horn section to come in. He'll come in. And, and vice yeah. versa. Yeah, he vice may versa, call yeah. Gary up. your charts. Yep. Well, they, you know, these guys are players, okay? And there's charts written. Okay, in our band, everything is written. I write about 85% of the charts. And just for that particular purpose, Jonathan, all these guys read so well. Where if Michael Pryor, who sits in with us, and, and Tommy Hamilton. Tommy Hamilton. Uh, yeah. How about Tommy? Tommy's a player and a half, <laughs> yeah, okay? A yeah, it, 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 it just doesn't get any better. But you put the book down in front of these guys. They have Gary Rixner on the right of him, Jonathan Sirafaz on the left. Right. And they, and, they, and they just, all of a sudden, this, and they don't, the band doesn't sound any different. Yeah. Yeah, right. like, no like he was there all along. Like yeah. all along. Like he was there all along. And these guys solo like Well, you don't no give tomorrow. Rixner charts, do you? <laughs> <laughs> he's a little over the top. Yeah, yeah he's, he's <laughs> Oh, Gary? No. Yeah. He's <laughs> Gary had yeah, a, he's my best buddy. He's he's a he, had a, he had a band when he first came to town. Yeah, I forget. He did. It was, was. Uh, he did. BHQ. BHQ. What? What? What that it was a horn for? band. That was Billy. I'll tell you what it was. And his, when he was out in Pittsburgh, it was Bill Harms Quartet. And they used to have a group out there. And Bill Harms, we had the opportunity. He, he sat in with our group. We went out to Fox Chapel in Pittsburgh, and Jonathan got sick, and we had Bill come up from uh, Pittsburgh to join us as a trumpet player, excellent horn player. Yeah. But it was Bill Harms Quartet BHQ. That's where that came That's from. That's where it came from. Uh, Paul, I, talk about your lineup. your lineup <coughs> now. What, what? Lineup now, and, and I just cannot, honestly, Jim or Sal, say enough about these guys. It's the best I've ever had. Is that right? I have a horn section which flat out could play against anybody, anytime, anywhere. With Gary Rixner, Nick Driscoll, Jonathan Sirius. They really make three horns girl. sound like six or seven. Yeah. Their intonation is just impeccable. Uh, Stevie Corcoran, who sings incredible, good bass player. Stevie, I brought Stevie in around 1980 or 19. 
99 or 2000, somewhere around. Um, Bobby O'Connell. <coughs> Bobby, Bobby's the master. I mean, Bobby lived out in New York City for years and years, and he just plays piano and organ. He's got a natural feel, natural feel for music and rhythm and blues, and he just adds some sultry things that just actually made me a, a better player. Is that because, right? Yeah, because I can listen to him and then spin off on that. And Pat Marcinko, Pat's great. That's wonderful. Pat's just a what wonderful a family. Player. Marco's brother and Marco's yep. son. But uh, it's it's Patrick is as good as it gets, and our, our girl uh, Fawn Muckerji, uh, uh, she she sings as good as anybody. You always had a good good girl. Singer. I always had a, a female in the group. That yeah. was because I always wanted to go to a direction where I didn't want to be hemmed in. If I couldn't do a female, a great female song came out. Right, and, and there's Aretha so many of them. So many, so many And you also have the, you know, the male <coughs> vocals, you know. And right. I don't want to leave, leave anybody out, Patrick, Bobby. Uh, yeah, have you left anybody out? I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah. think about it. Who's your lineup now? Uh, we have a lot of the guys who have been with me from oh, the beginning. Jesus. You forgot somebody who? Tony Vernetti, oh, my no, man. You mentioned oh, him come before. On. No, I didn't. I yes, you did. You mentioned Tony as a lead I singer forget. before. Tony, uh, he's the best. He's well, just... that's nice, and you give him the spotlight. I do. I mean, he he deserves it, and he earns it, and uh, and that's that's where it's at. When and you earn Leo's, something and deserve Leo's it. Leo's a little yeah. boy. Talent, a, a, a wonderful talent. Well, you you've supported him over the years. I mean, I have. You and, really uh, have. He's but the, brought him along. Just now, I'll, I'll turn it over to Sal. Go ahead, Sal. The, who who are you singing with? Well, we got some guys that have been with me from the beginning. We have Mark Wonko plays percussion, vocals, singing. Bob Welch plays drums. Um, the horn section, you know Mike Pryor, mm -hmm. uh, Todd Hunter, right, uh, I know Danny Todd. Coyle joined us from Dunmore. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then I think the rest of it, we're putting in some new players. This is where the young ones come in because once you get over 50, you, yeah. you kind of have to take a back seat. So I'm kind of yeah. pushing the, the young blood out there. We right. have um, a bass player by the name of Matt Calibro just hooked up with us. Uh, the girls, Natalie, um, uh, Natalie uh, Amagurk, uh, Nina Mattioli, and Talia Walsh. How long have the girls been with you? These three are probably just around a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just around the year. You know, the others we'd love to have. The other was back there, getting married. Some yeah. got married, starting families. Um, I had to get pregnant. off the other side of the stage when the girls started <laughs> singing with me, because I started sweating. Yeah. And I don't know whether it was the lights or what, but. They were exciting. You would always have some exciting. Uh, yeah, and of course we have Ken Brophy. You know, you know Kenny. Great player, good yeah. guy. Great player, great Jimmy, singer. The, the, the thing that you you really want to, as a band leader, which is so important to me and to Sal, these people not only can flat out play; they're my friends. They're your friends. They're yeah. my they're my yeah. good friends. You know, and and honestly, I, I don't have. We, we, there's never been a disparaging word. If we want to talk about someone, mm -hmm. sit down and say, okay, let's let's address the situation let's go look at it this way and that's that's it yeah you know and, and the rest is let's get out and have fun it's hard that it's hard to find like like yeah. paul says not only friends but i think i think you reach a point it's it's taken me all this time and i uh, i think the key word for me is chemistry you know these people who are your friends you be they become your friends through the music i think mm -hmm. but i think most importantly is you know when you have the right chemistry, the right makeup, you know. I mean, people have gone and gone. I've been doing this since I was 16 years old, and, you know, a lot of good players came and went, you know, and uh, it's just sometimes you could take someone who may not be quite as talented but has the desire mm -hmm. to do something, and you and, and, and you just love to watch that grow, and, 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 it, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's like a chemical thing. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, but it is. When it, you know when it's all working. You know when it's working. When it's not working, when it, you, yeah, right. it can get you know. pretty ugly. Yeah. You know, you know and, when it's and, working. And, uh, there's been a tr I, I just want to uh, name a couple impact players who really played a lot of years with me, and without these guys, this band could never continue. Uh, Lou Cossip, amazing oh. Oh, singer, yeah, great piano player play with Nancy Graziano, Danny Sheeran, right. and uh, you know, uh, uh, Jimmy Buckley, uh, Larry Hughes, wow. God rest his soul. Uh, Rick Barone, great. You remember Ricky, piano remember player. Ricky. A lot of years. These the are guys who played at the Deerhead with Phil Woods yeah. and Johnny yeah. Coates and Al Cohn and <coughs> some got, of the uh, great, greatest musicians in the world. Yeah. Jack Finnerty, who is uh, our, our head librarian. of the librarian over here, great bass player. Is uh, Ann Finnerty, Fran McMullen, with me Fran, 16 good years, great drummer. singer. 
But all these people, uh, 16 you know, years for him, yeah, was just about 16. Wow. Marshall Kornblatt, who was a great piano player and a sub, but he, you know, he, he comes in and just fits in. I don't know if you know yeah. Marshall. A little, my little Jewish friend from uh, <laughs> from Wilkes-Barre comes in, and uh, Bobby, I'll, I'll tell you a beautiful story about how you, when you have a relationship with with musicians and friends. Bobby O'Connell got very sick on a Saturday afternoon, and we are waiting for him at the Perkins Pancake House in Dunmore. He's supposed to meet us there at 1 o'clock. We have a wedding in New Jersey that evening. This is only eight months ago. Well, Bobby's never late. All of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. I can get him on the phone. Finally, his wife called me. He's in the hospital. Oh. Okay. Now, make sure Bobby's taken care of. He's okay. Now, I don't have a piano player to go to New Jersey with. <laughs> Why didn't you call me? <laughs> Probably working. <laughs> Probably was. Yeah. First thing comes to mind is Marshall. I call Marshall. Oh, okay, Paul. I'll make it. And uh, you will? Yeah, what time do you start? I said 7 o'clock. Okay, give me the address of my GPS system and I'll see you there. Wow. Came like that. And nobody knew. And it was just so beautiful. That, that's yeah. friendship, you know. And what did he read? Yeah, we have, we have a full book of piano yeah. charts that I write uh, for yeah. just for that case. But I mean. You have perfect pitch, they no, tell me. Frankie not, Gervasi called and said you did. I do not. He said, that's why I always sound better with you. <laughs> <laughs> far from it. Far from it. You know, I, I, I can't let this hour go by without mentioning uh, that uh, you guys have a fan out there who he calls Daddy on a Sax Maniacs his favorite band, and that's President Bill Clinton. Uh, could tell us a little bit about how that came about. Oh, I don't think we have enough time for that. Uh, I'll give you the short version. We were playing after the first election in 92. We were playing at Farley's. Right. It was just I've a normal night. There, it right. was just a regular night. It was there. right around Thanksgiving, somewhere that week, and I forget. And Jamie, Jamie. Uh, Brazil. Brazil and Tony Rodham came in. Right. And uh, I think my brother was with them. My brother yeah. Tommy used to hang out with uh, those guys. Right. They came in there and they said, hey, you know, we'd like to get you guys to play for my brother-in-law, Tony was telling me, I said, who? Your brother yeah, and I'm saying, who? <laughs> who? And uh, he said, we'd like to get you guys down there to play. And I said, yeah, okay, you know, here's my card. You know. I just kind of blew it off like sure. I didn't expect anything. And a couple weeks later, they were calling me from Washington and saying, you know, we need you to clear uh, January, whatever the dates were, 12th through the 18th or something, the Mayflower Hotel and all this kind of thing. And that's, that's where it all did That's they what fingerprint started. you first? Oh, yeah. They, they How was he? How's his chops? Actually, you're going to see that because let me tell you what I oh, brought good. with me. Good, I'll good, tell good. You, uh, let me tell you what, what I brought with me. Um, I have a, a CD that was taken um, right at the White House. My brother had to sneak the camera Your in. Brother because Carmen? My brother Chuck, actually. Oh, Chuck. My, yeah, my baby brother. <laughs> they had to sneak the camera in from the side of the stage. Um, Anthony, hopefully, will get it all queued up first later yeah. on and you'll see he's playing, so you can decide for yourself. I'm 
I'm convinced that him going on uh, Arsenio. Arsenio Hall helped put him over the top because people saw saw that politician they in a relate. different light. They could relate. They could to relate. That. He was up there doing something that yeah. he's not great at, but that he was giving it his all. And and uh, by the way, I remember then watching the Today Show the next morning, and they said, you know. The band that stole the show down here was Daddy O and yeah. the Sax Maniacs. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of yeah. fun. That was the first year that was at the Mayflower Hotel, right on Connecticut Avenue. That was that was a lot of fun. We saw some people there that, I mean, I, I look back now and I'm thinking, uh, you know, uh, Barbara Streisand, uh, um, Donna Donna Mills, uh, Carly Simon, wow. uh, Steven Spielberg. Oh boy. You know, uh, Tony Randall. The MC on this CD, on this tape that you're going to see, the MC was, um, uh, what's his name? Here's your request and dedication. What's, what's that guy's name? Oh, Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem. <laughs> How can I forget? I'll never forget Casey what's Kasem. his name. He was there with his wife. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you'll, see, you'll see it all in there. It's, I remember you told me. That's We great. spoke, you and I spoke about that yeah. uh, when you came back. And you, you said, Paul, he says, i got to tell you this. I told my band, he says, right here tonight, you are in the safest place in the world. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. That? exactly. You tell me that with exactly. all the security around. You're in the oh, sure. That's right. I remember that's, you telling me that. Right. That was that's, the, right. that's the center of the universe when the president's that's on right. stage. That's right. That's the safest that's place. Safest you'll ever be in your life. Absolutely. Was there? Is there anything? Uh, you guys go back uh, so many years. Let me ask you this: uh, What relationship did you have to a group of musicians who came before you in this town? Musicians like over on the strip. But BBK oh, I, and the Heartbeats, and uh, well, I go back a little. who was it? The, Ald the Aldrich brothers? No, it was. Not, I'm uh, getting the name wrong. They I'll, still play. I'll, I'll come from it, but uh, uh, let me go back a little further than even than further BBK. than that. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, two of the guys that were the greatest influence, uh, beside my wife Sharon, who really supported me through this whole musical career. Because if you don't have a, a great lady mm. behind you, you're going absolutely Support nowhere. Support system. And she would just support. I mean, I love her dearly for that. But the the most, uh, the two most wonderful people that were influences was Angelo Gallucci. Oh boy! Okay. What a great guy. And David Kern. Now Angelo Gallucci had his shop on North Washington Avenue. I remember. And I started taking lessons there, and I was 12 <coughs> years old from David Kern, and got fairly good at it fairly quickly. And by 15, I was teaching, with the understanding that I had to continue my lessons with David. David Kern to this day is still the most magnificent player, guitar, he played anything. Mm -hmm. Piano, he plays bass, he played accordion, I mean, whatever you Didn't want him to David play. David teach in the Scranton School District? David taught at North Scranton yeah. High School for years, but he also taught me over at... South? No, no, at Gallucci's when Gallucci's. we taught there. Mm -hmm. but, but Angelo Gallucci, he and his wife Peggy had one of the old groups yeah. that went back <clears> for, for years and there was... Uh, my, my, I have to mention my uncle Joe Gambo with Gene Dempsey was still Gene going. Dempsey. Papa Joe, I love you. Yeah. And he's 88 years old and wow. he just sat in with us two weeks ago oh, at, at no. my nephew's wedding. Oh, what a thrill. And it, this, do I have time for a quick Go story? ahead, what a thrill. This is that Papa Joe. I, I wanted to get him up to play with our band because he and Nikki are great friends and Gary and Jonathan. And he's my uncle. So I'm trying to figure out a way how I'm going to get him up here because he, I knew he wouldn't be too happy about coming up. So I just told the band before we started, when I give you a cue, I'm going to announce him. You're just going to go down and take one arm under his arm, and you're going to help him up. We had a chair wow. there for him. We had the music. <laughs> and that's the way we got him up on stage. And I says, Uncle Joe, Papa, he says, give me a sound check. And I did that for a reason, so the people who know he's really playing went, you, but that, but that, but that, yeah. <laughs> I swear to God. And he looks up at me, and he smiles, and he gives me a wink. Yeah. And he played in the mood with the, we had, oh, used four uh, horns. And oh, you know, sweet. those people we admired, and uh, Bill Evans, remember Billy Evans? Bill Evans, Evans Another absolutely, great saxophone player. absolutely. You know, but, but bef that was going back, I think, uh, in the Gene Dempsey time, before Buddy Kays and the Heartbeats. That was a great band. That was but, a great band. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was Buddy Kays and the Heartbeats. Uh, did you play in the Poconos? You remember Bob I Widener did. and the Devils up there? Bob still goes down to the Deerhead Inn. I don't, I don't recall that Water name, Gap. but I, you know, I did he the Poconos played at the for Chuck years Hole and years. Heart. I did all the resorts uh, yeah. from uh, the 70s through probably the mid 80s. Bob and Newman was at remember Mount Bob Airy Newman? Lodge. Yeah, and there was and also April, his daughter Fred was Bevan was at Mount Airy yeah. for, for a while. And then there. they'd all go down to the Deer Head Inn yeah. and, and jam with yeah. Phil Woods and Al Cohn and all those guys, Irby Green. 
Uh, two of my friends I went to college with, uh, Denny Carrigan, Bobby Mancusi, Mancuso, own the deer head now, and they've upgraded it and they serve great vegetarian food and regular food. Oh, deer head's wonderful. It's wonderful yeah. music. It's just too bad it's so far away. And when the yeah. when the groups, good groups are playing, they're always working. Yeah, right. that, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the, the thing. Problem. And that's you know, that's why when you had those clubs in the old days, that that the police didn't come down too hard on them, that that you guys could get from your gig after two o'clock and go and sit in mm -hmm. uh, and have a beer and then sit in with the with the band at a place called like the Deerhead Inn and uh, and net networking, yeah. find out about gigs and all. It's a it's a very well, the other, close society. The, the other place that we had that Bill McHugh and I, uh, when we closed our first lodge, uh, we built a building across the street on Route 6 called Lodge 2, which you played. I remember that. And uh, we had some really great acts in there. We had uh, my first uh, in December, I believe it was 77 or 78, not really sure. We had Lionel Hampton in. Okay. I Hampton met, met him in. before he passed away. What a wonderful man. He packed the place. We had. Uh, uh, Woody Herman and the Young Thundering Herd. Wow. He had 18 pieces with him. And I get a call from him. He's on his way in, and uh, uh, he said, Paul, do you think I can rehearse at your place? As soon as lunch is over at 2 o'clock, you're more than welcome. And he said, yes, sure, you can, you can rehearse. Uh, I said, but I have to tell you, I have to be able to invite all my friends. <laughs> of course. So I made phone call after phone call. We had about 50 people, sure. all musicians, watching wow, wow. your free concert in my place with Woody Herman, oh. you know, just ripping. We had Buddy Rich. And Buddy and, uh, Rich, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Buddy was in. Uh, Did you have Maynard? I had Maynard a I number met, of times. I met Maynard yeah. before he passed away. He yeah. was a meditator like myself. He was. We, he was. Uh, we, he was a gentleman. What was the name yeah. of that Steely Band tribute band that came through there one night? Yeah, geez, we, I can't remember offhand. Oh, Bill I'll would tell know you that. what. Uh, we had a steely, yeah, awesome. steely band. Yeah. Pretty oh, awesome. Pretty awesome. We had rare earth. Rare, awesome. We had rare earth when, when they were hot. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. rare earth. Yeah. Good. And, yeah. we, and we used, we used a lot of road groups, but we also used an awful lot of local groups. I made sure, yeah. you know, Good that, for you. Yeah, that, you know, we took care of the, the guys. You know, that was the hot, that was the hot spot. Oh, that for many years, yeah. So tell me about, uh, about the concert that you, you've talked a little bit about today. Tell me a little bit more about your vision for uh, this concert with okay. hmm. this uh, this was a topic that Jack Bordeaux and I heard, heard. believe it or not Sal my, myself Jackie and, and all the boys and the poets we're all friends you know and, and this, 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 this is wonderful you know uh, do we strive to be the best we can of course again but we're all friends you know which means that's, that's something really yeah. you know big to me so Jack and I were talking I says uh, it's time to give something back, and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Jack and I talked a little bit about it. And uh, he was the one who came up with Daddy O and the poets, and says, "Let's do a, you know a, I mean, a collage of four groups, and get our biggest place of entertainment." And uh, uh, and the only thing we'd like to do it inside is because of uh, the fact that it takes weather out of the sure uh, out of the sure. Uh, uh, I never when I situation. conceived this program, there was never any. Uh, second thoughts in my mind about what four bands. Well, we, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. All and when we when we did our summer concerts, there was never any consideration other than we're going to build the concert around these four bands, because then you could bring in a Phil Woods and a Tommy Hamilton and a Nelson. What's Nelson's last? Nelson Hill. Nelson Hill from the Poconos, and you could bring it because, and then there'd be a built-in crowd there that came to listen to your horns mm -hmm. and your rhythm and blues band and uh, we exposed a lot of people That's to right. a lot of great musicians. Right. John Coates has been down no here question. many, right. many times. And I had the, the privilege of, uh, of uh, meeting Phil. I never played with Phil, but I had the privilege of, of uh, being in his company. And the first time I met him, this, this is one of the greatest saxophone players in the world. Yes. First time I met him, I said, Phil and Paul Abel, I have the exact change band. He said, I know all about your band. Did he say that? He did. And he says, what you do, he said, is tremendous, keeping eight and nine and ten people oh, working. Wow. And coming from one of the greatest in the yeah, world. Right. So, you know, the, the thing is, for myself, for Sal, for Jackie Bordeaux, for all the guys Jackie. in the Poets, um, uh, Frankie Gervasi, listen, we don't make all the right decisions, okay? But as band leaders, we made more right than wrong because yeah. we're still... I'm on my fifth decade. 
you know, from 1967, all right? And you're probably well, there as long as I am. Yeah. So when you're in existence this long and yeah. constantly working, okay, constantly, there has been no interruption for, for 42 years yeah. with me. Actually, longer since I was a Never teenager. Never had but, a night off. You know, you give up so many things, but you're doing more things right than you are doing wrong. You still get nervous? I don't get nervous on stage, okay? Uh, if I said I didn't get nervous, uh, I'd be lying. Because here's what happens to me about, about nerves. I want it to go right. When I'm finished doing the first dances, the introductions, getting all the formalities out of the way, and sometimes I have 20 people I have to have, Phonetically perfect names and you know, yeah. screw up and right, right. I'll tell you one time I, I had a I, I had a, a Japanese wedding. Oh my god! I swear I'm not kidding you. I had a Japanese wedding and there was a list from here to here and it started with the with the, the grandparents and, and just went down and I was sweating. I, the tears are I mean it's, the tears it's that's coming off funny. my face. That's the most stressful part. That, that's that's stress. We're talking about that's the stressful. Part. Getting their music together, having yeah. the first dances together. Right. Uh, oh, when man. that's so over, after you just that, go, then you can. Yeah. Cruise. Then you just go. You know, can we, you know, yeah. we're very confident. Yeah. Because they have that in the can then and yeah. for the rest of their we're, lives. We're, we're good. Yeah. We're but good. that night that I got through all the. You played my wedding. I know that. Yeah. Know. That was what wonderful. Year was that? What year was it? It's on the inside of my ring. My wife's going to kill me. It uh, was in 1990. July 24th. I better have that right. Uh, you better. I'm going to start asking you questions like that. They'll get you in trouble. But anyway, we, we you did play our wedding, and um, you played many of my events. And uh, and I appreciate that. And Jim. my Thank you. Uh, the, the poets and old friends played for uh, our our events also. It's know, been a, it's I been congratulate a, uh, Sal. I congratulate. Poets, I congratulate old friends. Yeah. You know, and, and just to have these things continue, you know, Jimmy. If this is June 24th, I might have saved myself, but okay. I don't know. I think we right. could, we could <laughs> Go ahead, that. I'm sorry. No, we could take saying, that out and edit it. It's just terrific all coming from this area, and uh, I, I don't know how. It's, a lot of talent here. Oh, yeah, without question. Uh, talk of, about some of the guys of that came that as you were coming up, uh, wasn't there, what, what, wasn't Pete, uh, Pete? Angelo Gallucci's buddy that played out in Vegas. Oh, Pete DiMarzo. Pete DiMarzo. Pete DiMarzo. And then there's the other uh, Pete. Um, who's the guy that played out in uh, Vegas for so many years oh. from West Side? Oh, he played the I'm, broom. I'm thinking of <laughs> He played Misty on the he broom. He played Misty on the broom and he played. He was a comic. What was his name? Hey, I want to say Gondola, but that's, that's not it. Con 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 Martucci. Uh, uh, I'm going to. I, I can't. I can't. Come he, that he, he said a lot of musicians play by ear. I play by nose, and he picked out yeah, a young yeah, yeah. Merv Griffin show one yeah, night. What was his name? He picked out uh, some songs. He's supposed to be delightful to anybody that comes out from from Scranton. It'll come to me, fellow. And I, 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 I sang with Bobby Arvon uh, down at um, uh, the Capitol this year. Jimmy I did McNulty. his show. Did you do his show? When his show was in town, I got called to play guitar for it. Yep. Wow. Pete Barbuti. Pete Barbuti. Uh, just kidding. Just kidding. Thank you. I, I, you I, saved I, I, me. I have Sal's that whole numbers, but I, I got it. That whole family would be down there. I know. Yeah. Well, Pete Barbuti. Pete Barbuti. Right, now you just you just sparked yeah. something. Pete Barbuti uh, had a group called the Millionaires here the in Scranton. The Millionaires. That's going back in That's the Angelo back. Gallucci. Yeah. And you, you, you can't go without mentioning Tony Costa. The Town way. Pipers was he? Tony Costa was mm -hmm. the Town Pipers, but that still Tony is just one of the most magnificent. Yeah, players. What another a great friend, great guy, great talent, and he had a club called Town Piper, and it was right down in Lackawanna, now towards the end of the mall, I think where the Bonton was at that time. But and his his wife Joni at the time, and there was uh, Jack Geigel played in that. Jackie band. Geigel, oh, Jackie. drummer, Jack. used to play on the wall at the yeah, wine yeah. cellar. <laughs> I was I was at the door. I was the skinniest. <laughs> Most you non threatening a bouncer. bouncer and they had me <laughs> you at was the, a bouncer? Well, I was a bouncer at the wine cellar and Jackie would play there and the musicians had come Asparagus Sunshine had come Asparagus down. Asparagus Sunshine. They also played my club at Tony the, uh, Marino. Tony Marino player. magnificent. I mean it's yeah. just, just we need here. another place like that. We yeah. need we need we need a venue here. Well, so we you know go and, I'm retiring December well, twenty sixth. That's my gift, my Christmas gift to the people of Scranton. I've done enough damage. And so whatever I could do to help promote the musicians, well, the we dancers, gonna... the actors, the artists from Scranton, 
I want to do that. That's we are going to put you on our, on our uh, uh, list for helping us out on our committee. Please, for please do. Votes without question. Please do. Uh, there's just one thing I want to do before. I don't know how we're working on time. Oh, we're good. But the video that you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna see of the exact change, which is evolution, was done by my nephew, who is an amateur, Colin Fricky, and he did such a beautiful job in his home computer. Colin, I want to thank you personally from your uncle. And you got credits at the end of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other guy I'd like to really thank is, is Rob Latieri. You guys know Rob? Sure, yeah. Rob's a terrific photographer. Ra Rob, uh, we work an a lot artist. of weddings yeah. together. And uh, he snaps pictures of our, we don't even know, and he sends me these beautiful pictures, yeah. which you'll see, yeah. of, uh, and, uh, uh, of the exact change. I want to I want to thank him. Uh, and um, uh, just incredibly nice people, you know. You guys have a good loving uh, well, support yeah, group. Yeah, it is. It, it's now, pretty, it's we owe a lot of this to you. Oh, thank you. This, thank this, you. This, this TV is going to be great. Uh, I really want to get the cultural uh, people from Scranton to be seen. Uh, you know, we could put Joanne Arduino and her dance group on, Helen Gauss's dance group. Uh, we can put uh, uh, artists you know, graphic artists on. I just want to get as much on this venue as possible. I so maybe that's my next <laughs> career. I don't know. I think any help you need in supporting the arts, you just include me in. I'm, okay. Uh, it's, it's, Ditto. It's, you know, it, uh, uh, high schools have all the sports, and I want to continue doing whatever we can to implement the support of the arts in all the high schools. Right. And, uh, and, and that's, and when we do, um, this concert, uh, probably uh, part of my uh, charity that I'm going to be donating to will be the arts. Good. You know, I, I might be able to help you with, cause, because I do work for the governor still, at least for a couple more weeks. And uh, Philip Horn, who is uh, head of the Arts Council, and Marco Marcinko and um, Phil Woods and Bob Duro of Schoolhouse Rock have been meeting occasionally to talk about how we can advance the arts in education. So uh, maybe we can help out there. Sure. I want to thank sure. Anthony George for uh, this wonderful technical direction and Mark you, McGlory sir. for the uh, artistic job, uh, direction. Good work. And our producer, John Darcy. And uh, I, I want to thank Sal and um, Paul and um, Jackie and um, Frankie Gervasi, and we're going to fill out this program with uh, music, and you're going to be able to see it eight, nine, ten times. We'll put, a, put an ad in the paper and let you know when it's going to be on. So if you miss the first time, you'll get it the second time. Jimmy, I, I just want to thank you for doing this, and uh, this is, was incredible fun. My pleasure. I mean, I'm not kidding. I can sit down here, and if uh, cameras grow up and we get a a scotch, we can continue. <laughs> hey, you don't want to see me drinking because this <laughs> table can't hold me. I'll get I up and start kidding. singing Johnny Be Good. Uh, but I thank you so much. I really do. It's my pleasure. I want to support Always the artist. Always a pleasure, artists. my friend. Same here, Paul. The little yeah. Irish guy gets to put these four incredibly talented Italian musicians on <laughs> television. So thank you, and we'll see you on our next program. I have these here blue flowers. <laughs> happy, happy